Hello, my beauties, and welcome to Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. On this channel, we discuss all aspects of the ascension process. I have a variety of services that I offer to assist in your awakening journey, and you can find those listed in the description box below. I want to welcome everyone to Leo season. This is what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to get into these energies of Leo season, which happens every year when the sun enters the sign of Leo. So this began on July 22nd and will go until August 22nd. And as a collective, we're all going to be experiencing these energies and working with this energy of Leo. So we're going to talk about about what that energy is, how we might experience it, and we're going to pull some cards to see what we might expect to sort of unfold throughout this season. I do apologize. I feel as though my hair really should be done for the Leo season video. Leos are known for their hair. My sister is a Leo, and I can tell you her hair is on point every single day. It is absolutely gorgeous. I have a very Leo-like mane, but mine is really wild and crazy, and I will be the first to admit that I do not always have the time to dedicate to making it uh making it camera ready so we're gonna imagine we're gonna uh call in that etheric leo hair uh for this video today and we are going to commend all of the beautiful leos out there who do such a fantastic job with those beautiful beautiful manes and so this kind of takes us into the energy of leo right len leo is the showstopper Leo is that person who takes center stage in their own lives. They are charismatic. They are expressive. They are bold. They are beautiful. They have just this energy, this electric energy that really draws you in. And so we're going to be feeling that electric energy as we move through Leo season. We are going to be feeling more inspired and more inspiring. We are going to feel as though we want to uh, really take the role that we've given been given in this lifetime and play it to the hilt and but this is a time to remember and really look into what is the role that we're playing and is that role truly who we are part of the the trap of leo energy is that energy of really enjoying the validation and the applause and sometimes playing to that applause and beginning to lose the self in that process and so we are going to be called to look at anywhere where we have lost ourselves in that that energy of playing to the crowd where it is that we may have compromised who we truly are and if we're ready to allow that deeper truth of who we are to take center stage in our lives that's the invitation of leo season leo is a fixed fire sign we've already moved through the first fire sign of the zodiac with the sign of Aries. And now we're getting into a deeper understanding, a deeper and richer understanding of who we are and really solidifying that. Leo is about the ego, right? And this doesn't necessarily, it's not a bad thing. It's about our understanding of who we are. And so how do we understand who we are? Do we, do we embrace the truth and the fullness and the richness of who we are? And how do we express that understanding in the world? What are we wanting to create with that energy? Leo is very much the energy of creation. Leo rules the fifth house, which is all about, I, I always talk about the fifth house as the house that represents everything that makes life worth living. Right, So it's dating, it's romance, it's children, it's pleasure, it's hobbies. It's all of that stuff, all of that stuff that enriches our lives. And so how are we, what is our relationship to those aspects of our lives? Uh, when the sun moves into Leo, it really brings the focus to these areas and it really shows us how we are experiencing that energy. How are we embracing that energy? How are we embracing the fun in life? Can we find the fun in life? Can we lighten up a little bit? Right? Lighten up a little bit and also, as we said, really allow ourselves to shine. Where might we be dimming our light and are we ready to let that line sh light shine more brightly? And remembering that as we do this, we invite others to do this as well. So that's that beautiful energy. Uh, there can sometimes be an energy of competitiveness. And so this is one of those lower vibrational expressions. 
uh, along with that that need for validation and applause is that uh, that competitive energy. So where where can we seek to look at anyone where, that we may find ourselves or feel ourselves in competition with, and instead look to them as a guidepost for what it is that we want to achieve? What is it that we desire? Right, this person is bringing that drive out in us. They're bringing that motivation out in us to become better, and so we can thank them for that. But we can also see and understand that it's not a competition. We are all each beautiful and unique, and that's when we draw on some of that Aquarius energy to balance balance out that Leo energy. And if you guys are interested in in this concept. Uh, sign up for my talk in Synchronicity University. I'm going to be teaching a class on this, the balancing of polarities uh, through Nadia Shah's Synchronicity University. And uh, I believe there is one or two days left. Uh, you have until the end of August to choose your own tuition rate, rate as low as $5 a class. So that information is in the description box below. But it's drawing on that Aquarius energy, which is the opposing sign to Leo, and seeing that energy of allowing ourselves to be knowing that we are unique. Right. So if we're unique, there really is no competition because nobody else can do what we do the way that we do it. So it's really knowing that and then embracing everyone, embracing our peers instead of looking at them as like, I have to be better than this person. Right. Or I'm not measuring up to this person, which remember is the ego energy. We want to uh, we want to kind of transcend that. And look and applaud those who are others who are doing well. Applaud others who are doing the things we're doing. And if we feel like they're doing them better than we are, then why is that, right? What can we learn from them? And how can we build each other up? This is an energy where we're being invited to learn how to build each other up instead of tear each other down. So that's a really beautiful energy. And it's the opening, the heart opening energy. Leo is a big hearted energy. It's just big in every sense of the word. So it's like, how can we expand and allow that heart energy to open up? How can we work with that energy of generosity, that generosity of spirit, that giving and receiving and opening up that harmonious flow? Right. Where we're not giving in order to receive. We're just we're giving from the fullness of our being, from the fullness of our hearts. And that naturally, of course, does ripple back. So really opening up and working on that channel of giving and receiving during Leo season as well. Uh, working with the energy of the inner child. Leo is very much that youthful energy. That fifth house that it rules does also rule children. And so it's looking at our own inner child. How can we nourish our inner child? How can we play with our inner child, right? Uh, in what ways can we express that energy and heal any aspects of our inner child that are coming up for healing at this time? And we may have aspects of that that are presenting themselves. And those are opportunities for us to really heal that energy and incorporate that we uh, when we can look at the world through that childlike lens right that lens of awe that lens of joy that lens of fun right that that playful lens it really opens life up to us in so many different ways so how can we open ourselves up to the magic of life right that's really what this leo energy is asking us how can we open ourselves up to the magic the joy and the bliss of life really sink our teeth into life the way that a lion would sink its teeth into a gazelle that's sort of like what i'm see what i'm seeing in my mind um i i there's part of me that doesn't like to think about stuff like that but it's the cycle of life you know um <laughs> And so where are you ready to sink your teeth into life? And this is be beautiful that we're feeling this energy. And this energy is coming in uh, right as we are moving into that 8-8 portal energy, uh, right as we are beginning the yellow electric seed year, which is very much about seeding our manifestations, right, on um, what we're creating. We had that conjunction of Mars and Venus in the sign of Leo on the 13th. So about... Um, like nine days or something like that uh, before the sun moved into Leo. We had that. And of course, now we have Mercury in the sign of Leo as I'm recording this video as well. Uh, Venus in Virgo. We have Mars. Mars was in Leo and is now moving into Virgo as well. But uh, just a lot of that beautiful Leo energy. And so how do we capitalize on that? How do we utilize that? How do we achieve the highest expression of that Leo energy and really allow ourselves to open up to who we are, to open up our hearts, to to uh, to embrace the world and this life and all that it has to offer. And so we're going to start out here 
for this reading of what we can expect during Leo season. Clear. With, um, I'm trying to remember what this tarot deck is called that I'm using here. I don't know. I'll look it up and I'll put it in the description box below uh, what it is. But uh, we're going to get some opening guidance from the tarot here. And that card wanting to flip out, which makes sense. We got the Palace of Wands. And so Leo energy is fire energy. Wands are fire energy. So a lot of that, like that fire, it's like, come on, baby, light my fire. That's, uh, that's what's popping into my head right now, right? So where is your fire? Where and how is your fire wanting to be lit? And how can it be expressed in the world? This is all about, this is the world as a stage. This is really a feeling passionate, feeling driven, allowing that passion, that desire to drive you right? Allowing that creative force. The wands are all about creative energy. They're about passionate energy. They are, yes, about sexual energy. They are also about spiritual energy. And so really uh, being lit up in one or more of those areas of our lives during Leo season, stepping into that palace of wands. Then we have the two of pentacles. All right, let's get some more energy here. And that is Jupiter and Capricorn. They're drawing me to look at the Jupiter and Capricorn association with this card, which is all about expanding in the physical world. Right? This is definitely feels like a manifesting energy as I'm looking at this right now. So big, big energy for manifesting. We have that Lion's Gate, that 8-8 eight, eight portal. Uh, which happens every year on the 8th. And we are doing a live stream uh, manifesting, new moon manifesting uh, ceremony uh, slash 8-8 portal activation ceremony on YouTube. So uh, that, that video is already posted in queue uh, waiting at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on the 8-8 portal. Huge energy, you guys. Huge energy as the sun and the moon meet together in the sign of Leo during this Lion's Gate portal. I mean, this, this, the energy is insane as far as creating and manifesting, right? So he's like putting those intentions up, right? Those are his intentions. Those are his desires. That's what he's wanting to create. And I'm noticing too how he's naked in this card. And that to me represents vulnerability. That represents truth. So this is manifesting from the truth in our hearts. And I feel like during Leo season, we're going to be shown through our manifestations what the truth in our hearts is. And so if we didn't already know, look to your outer reality because it's going to be showing you the truth that's in your heart. And once we know the truth that's in our heart, we're then willing, we're then able to forgive. We're then able to heal anywhere where we're finding that we still need that that we still require that, which then only makes our manifestations that much more powerful. Yeah, and we have the Six of Pentacles here. And we have the Moon in Taurus as the, um, the, the, the whatever, um, up in the top there. You see that, right? And that's, so that's very much about stability and security, Right? But this is also a card that represents Libra. And you see how he's holding the symbol for Libra down here. So there's balance. There's definitely balance that's wanting to be restored during Leo season. And for some people, it almost feels like, like a karmic balance being restored. So this is very much us receiving receiving the benefits of of uh, what it is that we have created through our actions right remember leo that fire energy is all about actions and remember it's fixed fire so it's stabilizing stabilizing action so uh what did we create what have we set in motion and what are we what is returning back to us now and for some people this isn't even this isn't like it is material, and you may see it in material as well as finance, as far as finances and abundance in that way is concerned. But for a lot of people with this Libra energy here, too, this is like in relationships. What have you put out in your relationships? That's going to be coming back to you. What kind of energy have you been putting out to the world in general? Because that is going to return to you. And for many, it is going to return to us in the form of harmonious relationships, possibly harmonious new relationships, or... 
uh, with the Six of Cups here, um, restored harmony to existing relationships. Anyone in a romantic relationship right now, right, the more playful you're able to be, the more you're able to embrace your, your inner child, the, the more it's uh, the, 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 the more benefit you're going to gain in your relationships, discovering that sense of fun, that sense of joy together. Yeah, we got the Queen of Cups with the Knight of Swords here. And this is that big heart energy, right? This is that big nurturing energy. Leo is actually, um, they don't necessarily always get much credit for this, but they are big nurturers. Like we said, they wear their hearts on their sleeves. They have big, big, beautiful energy. They are sensitive. Leo is a sign that is because that heart is so big. Leo energy can be sensitive, right? Especially to criticism, right? It's that childlike energy. And so treat yourself and treat others the way you would treat a child. Um, be, be careful with your words. Be loving and gentle with your words. Be affirming with your words when you're communicating with people and with yourself. But this is the energy of uh, definitely something coming in, uh, possibly very quickly. With this Queen of Cups here, it's definitely something emotional. So there's a lot of emotion going on this season, right? And we talked about that, the sensitivity of the Leo energy. And so uh, for some people, this is emotions uh, having to do with the past, having to do with childhood, having to do with, um, I'm hearing like missed opportunities for some. It's like uh, we're going to also start being able to link and understand, and this is what we talked about with the inner child healing, how some of the situations in our lives, like where those were rooted in our childhood, where those patterns began. With the, uh, the Queen of Cups here, it's like where those um, that emotional patterning began. And so we may have situations that kind of uh, bring up that energy for us to review. Yeah. I, I'm definitely feeling also for people like we want to be careful that we're not making snap decisions based on our emotions. With this Knight of Swords and this Queen of Cups here, this is like a decision that's led by the emotion. And so we want to be led by our hearts, but we don't want to be led by our emotion. And we want to be able to tell the difference between the two, right? When we're, when we're truly being led by our hearts, it's a calm energy. It's a loving, open energy. When we're being led by our emotions, it can be a chaotic kind of energy, right? The heart is deeper than emotion. The heart is love. Love is considered an emotion, but it's not. Love is a vibration. Love is an action. Love is a state of being, that transcends emotion. And so uh, we, wanna, we want to uh, be aware of the difference. Yeah. Anything else here regarding the Six of Cups? Oh. And then we have the Hermit and the Three of Pentacles coming out. For, with the Six of Cups here. Yeah, so it's really this journey of going within. Going within, like we said, healing the inner child. There's a deep level of learning right now, like we said, around the Six of Cups energy, around this childhood energy, around situations from our past, really internalizing the lessons of those. And like we said, tracing those back to the root, which is often the childhood, the patterning in our childhood. And if you guys want assistance with this, please reach out to me. Uh, my email's in the description box below. But yeah, really getting to a deep, a deep understanding of that. Uh, many people getting deeper understandings and benefiting um, from the lessons that soulmates have come into their lives to teach them. Getting a deeper feel for those lessons. Yeah. Got the nine of swords here. All right, and so for some people, this uh, this could be a little bit uncomfortable. Tell me more. Uh, but then we got the Ace of Cups, right? 
And so it's like, as we go through Leo season, we may have to confront the pain. We may have to confront the fears, right? All of this energy, this is the energy that we're getting a clearer perspective on. Why did I go through this energy? Why did I experience this? If this is a recurring experience in my life, especially when it comes to relationship, why is that? What's underneath that? How can I go within, really learn from this? And with this Three of Pentacles, this is collaboration. So this is like the people, the souls that have come into your life to teach you these lessons, to, to teach you through this energy, oftentimes, right? And where, right, where can we trace that back? Where did that pattern, what set the, what created the fertile soil for that, those patterns and those lessons? Right. And how can I heal that? And then when you do, that's when this comes in. And this is ultimate fulfillment and bliss. This is a brand new cycle of emotional fulfillment of love. All right. Love of self and love of, of others. Yeah, that's the wheel turns. Right. This is fortune. This is good luck. This is destiny. Destined and faded events. This is uh, when when we start moving through a cycle, right? When we're able to move beyond beyond one set of lessons into the next set. Yeah, and some people, I mean, with these cards too, being next to each other. Those of you who read who read the who read tarot, you already know. I mean, that's powerful energy. That is definitely the energy of destined and faded events and um, that bring you that bring you into this energy more. Right. So when we are able to heal anything still within the emotional body. Right. When we're able to heal and then which allows us to open up that heart center even more to activate that even more. The blessings just come pouring in. Right. The love just comes pouring in. Yeah. And the lover is coming out, all right? So uh, many people may be meeting a divine soulmate uh, during this time. That's sort of like the, um, the I don't want to say the reward, but it kind of feels like that in a way for all the hard work and dedication that you've put into things. Judgment on the bottom of the deck. There may also be uh, decisions needing to be made around love during this cycle. Decisions, choices, judgment calls. Some people may have options. Some people it may be like choosing between the past and the future. Getting that contrast. But this definitely feels like a beautiful, sacred union coming in for people. And we've been feeling this, right? Yeah. And the Four of Wands. Which many people consider to, to be the Twin Flame card, the Eleven Eleven card. Right? But that is security. That is stability. That is fulfillment. That is all of all of the joy and the fulfillment that was once locked behind the, those doors. When you open up, when you heal and open up that heart center, that unlocks these doors. So that's really powerful. Really powerful. We're going to pull a couple Moonology cards here. Clear. What else can we expect from Leo season? Pretty powerful so far. Pretty dynamic. And a lot of this, I mean, we talked about that Mars-Venus conjunction, which started this new cycle in creativity and passion and love, right? Just before Leo season. And interesting, too, I think it was, and um, my math, so pardon if my math is off, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a word person, not a, not a numbers person, uh, but I do believe the 13th to the 22nd would be nine days. And if my math is correct there, uh, nine is a powerful number of, of closures, right? Of cycles ending. 
it's also a very spiritually auspicious number, a number uh, of spiritual mastery. All right, any guidance for Leo season? A new start is coming, new moon. Beautiful energy to have as the first card out. And we do have that new moon in Leo on that 8-8 portal that we were talking about. That's going to be a powerful gateway to peop for people. The energy is gaining momentum. Yeah, so this energy moving us toward this 8-8 portal, uh, moving us through Leo season. And then, of course, we are closing with a blue moon on the 22nd. Uh, so that's really powerful, too. And that's going to be that, that uh, second full moon in Aquarius that we're having here. So really working with that Leo Aquarius energy. Uh, so, yeah, the energy is picking up this new start. Whatever is new that's wanting to come into your life, like it's it's being attracted to you more and more dynamically every day that energy is really continuing to pick up speed and momentum so continue doing what you're doing and then we have a personal issue reaches resolution full moon in cancer so there's that have that heavy emotional energy that intense emotionality that uh whatever it is the the uh the things that we've been struggling with that we've been that we've been working on healing Really feeling those coming, feeling that healing coming full circle. Yeah. Cancer, the energy of the mother, the energy of the family. So for some people, this is family issues as well coming to resolution. Uh, anything to do with the mother. I'm definitely feeling that mother energy for some too. If there's been healing that you've been doing surrounding your mother or your relationship to motherhood. Being mothered. Possibly that's a childhood thing for some people too is uh, not feeling mothered, not feeling nurtured. And that energy of coming to terms with that and learning how to nurture the self. Uh, loss of parents, loss of mothers. Uh, lack where that mother energy is concerned. And then we have take time to breathe out and expect powerful change. New moon eclipse. All right. Wow. Wow. So uh, the changes are going to, I'm telling you guys, the energy is gaining momentum. These changes, these shifts, once they start happening, especially moving through this 8-8 portal, right? And and on through, through August after this, like these changes, it's going to be fast. Things are going to be shifting very, very quickly. And so that's why we're being told to take time to breathe out, right? To breathe. And this is something uh, that's come up a lot recently, this energy of just breathing. When the situations in our lives, the events in our lives get intense, when the energy in general gets intense, even on a physical or a metaphysical level, bring it back to the breath. The breath is how we integrate. The breath is how we release. The breath is how we, it is a tool that we can use to affect our consciousness. Breath is spirit. It is consciousness. So the way we take in that breath can have a significant effect on our consciousness. So really work with the energy of your breath. Just, uh, there's, there's going to be so much happening. And so it's allowing yourself to slow down, allowing yourself to take that breath. Just a steadying yourself, becoming like we learned throughout the blue lunar storm season, being that eye in the center of the storm and understanding for a lot of people, the storm is going to be a good thing, right? But even good things can feel overwhelming, especially when they're happening quickly. And on the bottom of the deck, we have full moon and Aquarius show the world the real you. So remembering that balance of that Aquari Aquarius energy, right? That authenticity, being called to our authenticity. work through your fears and surrender to the divine wanting to pop out ah prosperity lies ahead new moon in taurus so there's that abundance coming in for us right there yes i love that yeah that taurus energy coming through pretty strong in this reading today too and that libra energy we got new full moon in libra on the bottom of the deck a win-win outcome is more forecast and we have the scales again here too Right. And so definitely that that karmic energy, that justice, that that balancing of the scales that we've been talking about coming through uh, those who have 
like we said, put out that good energy, getting that good energy back. There's definitely a lot of energy of learning of relationship, right, with that Libra energy coming through a couple times in this in this reading and all that love energy. Uh, but not just our romantic relationships, all relationships. Really noticing and seeing uh, how we re how we interact in relationship, right? What that interaction is like, um, where that can be more harm harmonious and more balanced. But once again, like we said, that energy, Libra is another energy that can be a people-pleasing energy. So we don't want to fall into that end of the spectrum. We want to firmly uphold who we are, stand in our integrity, stand in our truth, right? Set those so strong boundaries. For a lot of people, this boundary energy is huge. It's huge. Leo is not an energy that's necessarily known for boundaries either. And so we're really wanting to and we're needing to um, understand that aspect of it as we move forward, that aspect of harmony, how that creates harmony. If we are, if we are giving in to people, if we are catering to people, if we are burying our own needs for, in order to care for the needs of others to an unbalanced point, right? Sometimes we, sometimes we have, there's that give and take, there's that compromise, right? But we don't want to be doing that consistently. If we're doing that, we think that we are creating harmony, but that harmony is built on something false, something unsustainable, and eventually that will fall apart. So it's really learning, uh, learning what true balance and harmony is, what true compromise is. You know, a true compromise both parties may not feel as though they got exactly what they want, but they feel that they got what they need. That's true compromise. If, if one person feels like they got what they want and the other person knows that they're not getting what they need, that's not compromise. That's not true compromise. That's not the kind of compromise that, that is successful long term. All right, that's why we talk about learning how to compromise without compromising ourselves. All right, we're going to pull a couple Black Moon Astrology cards here here leo season let's get some energies for leo season yeah so far these energies are not disappointing they are dynamic and it makes sense with this past energy too right cancer season which we just got out of brought some of that childhood stuff those deep childhood emotions and traumas to the surface and now we're healing those. We're integrating those. Ooh, South Node coming out first. This is the old energy, right? And then we have the fifth house, creativity, as we were talking about, right? That's the house that Leo rules. We have the third house, messages. And then we have the void, of course, moon missing. So that's interesting. And then Taurus again on the bottom of the deck here. I have. All right. Okay. So with the south node energy, this is the energy of the things that we're releasing. This is the energy of the things that we're letting go of, the things that we're leaving in the past. However... I'm being reminded of another aspect of the South Node energy. So the South Node also represents, <coughs> excuse me here, um, throat's getting a little scratchy. The South Node represents the energy that we've perfected in past lifetimes. Right? It do, uh, does represent karma too, so there's that karmic energy coming through strong, 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 right? But it also represents the energies that we've perfected in other lifetimes. And so uh, really bringing into completion uh, energies that we've been working on. So people who have had energies that you've been cultivating, that you've been learning how to master and work with in your life, there is a culmination of that that I'm feeling for many people. Yeah, and then we have this beautiful energy of creativity here. I feel like some people you want to be careful because uh, some of this old energy that you've been moving out of and healing from has to do with uh, overdoing it where the, where the pleasure is concerned. 
right? Like we don't want to slip back into those energies, right? Those hedonistic type energies, uh, addictive type energies. Uh, we want to be careful and we want to be wary of that. But it's also like I'm feeling for some people, it's like um, energies from your past. Or lessons that you've been learning. The South Node can represent lessons, right? And I'm thinking Saturnian energy here. I'm feeling that Saturn vibe. Ah, uh, lessons around expression, lessons around pleasure, around joy. Some people, uh, we have lessons to learn and those are experienced as either uh, too much pleasure and enjoyment and not enough, not enough responsibility or as, as, Oh, being overly responsible, responsible and not indulging, not allowing ourselves to enjoy the beauty in life. So really that energy of finding that balance where that is concerned as well, right? What is a healthy amount of pleasure? How can we, and um, what is healthy versus unhealthy pleasure, right? What is pleasure that takes me away from myself and out of myself? And what is pleasure that brings me more deeply into myself? That's the pleasure. That's the higher vibration of the Leo energy, of the fifth house energy that we want to cultivate. What kind of pleasure brings me deeper into myself? Because there's a lot of pleasures that can take us out of ourselves, that can distract us, that can feel really good and hit those buttons, right? But don't actually do anything to sustain us. They don't do anything to bring richness into our lives, right? So we really want to be paying attention to that. And I think that people are going to be receiving... A lot of communication about that. There's message you're being you're receiving a lot of messages, uh, and this is this always makes me think of like higher spiritual messages, right? Like uh, channeling your guides, your angels, but it can also be um, it can also be literal messages from people. But it's like it's you're being shown what's missing, seeing what's missing. If we're talking about um, all this energy that we've been talking about, about these lessons, this balancing of, of pleasure, uh, maybe also like how we've been trying to move out of some of this old energy, but there's been something that's been keeping us a little bit stuck, keeping us falling back. We're going to see, we're going to get an understanding of what that is. Yeah. Yeah. And for people also, this is coming through, who have been waiting on information and you haven't been receiving the information you need to move forward or to understand something, that, that, that information is going to be coming to you. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like the missing link, the missing piece. We're being shown that. Yeah, for some pe people too, or for somebody, there's been like a creative project or something that you've been wanting to, or trying to get off the ground. And for some reason, it just hasn't, things haven't been moving forward. And there was some sort of karmic lesson. There was something involved in that. There was some reason, something that needed to be balanced out or understood. And you're going to understand and learn what that is. And then that's going to move things forward. So that's like a very specific message for someone I feel like. But it's just really interesting because I keep being drawn to this, this clown or whatever this person is down here. I don't know why. That face just keeps drawing me in. Yeah, that's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't know what it is. I, maybe it will come to me at some point what the significance of that face is right now. But I'm just being like so drawn into it. Hmm. It's like... And I'm getting this energy of like somebody, 
I feel like the masks are coming off for some people during Leo season. Or something or someone is going to be unmasked and revealed for who or what they truly are. And this doesn't necessarily have to mean a negative thing. It could be a negative or a positive. And remember, negative and positive is all about perception. But somebody who's not recognized, their truth, their truth is not recognized. Uh, that truth is going to be revealed. And that may be the missing information that needed to come through. Yeah. Interesting. Any final cards here? We got the solar eclipse revolution. Oh, life's purpose. North node on the bottom of the deck, right? Moving from the old to the new. And then we have the fourth house roots with the 12th house escape. So this is really the healing and the illumination around the fourth house is the house that represents cancer. That's a house of our childhood, the house of the mother, all of that energy that we're talking about. And the 12th house is the, the third house in the trinity of the soul. This is the unconscious. This is the deeper collective energy. Uh, but that escape energy, once again, yeah, that escapism energy really going to be coming up for a lot of people, I think. Really going to be coming up for a lot of people. And where that stemmed from, where that started from, healing, whatever energy it is that is causing us to feel as though we need to escape. Yeah. This is also the unconscious, deep unconscious. So the roots... Right? What is rooted deeply in our subconscious that is ready to be revealed and come to the surface to allow for this revolution of energy to occur? This major change. It's a 44 card that propels us toward our life's purpose. Yeah. Yeah, lots of watery energy under that, some Venus energy. We're not going to get into that, though. Um, what are we going to get into here? I do want to grab a couple intuit oracles. Here. let's just get a couple key cards or phrases for this uh leo overall arching leo season energy let's just get a couple key cards phrases energies okay Ooh, so we have the bellows coming out a catalyst igniting getting things going spark kindle flames so there's that fiery energy right really setting things off and that's a 33 card so we just had a 44 card followed by a 33 card and then we got an 11 card okay and the 11 card is the whip. So this is tensity. This is, uh, can be anger. So there's some of that frustration energy. Uh, we do have a uh, kinky sex as an option too. So uh, some people may be experiencing that. Uh, we got to throw out the good as well, right? <laughs> uh, and then we have the six, the swans, the soulmate card out again. So interesting. So we've got a lot of intensity here. A lot of intensity. Yeah. Breath is also um, recommended or mentioned with the Bellows card. So really bringing it back to the breath here. Yeah, this is like really... Uh, it's like somebody... It's for Some people may get pu pushed to their breaking points. That's what I'm feeling. If you haven't been yet... Getting pushed to your breaking point because a change needs to happen. Yeah, a change needs to happen. And so some people, that you may experience that. Tell me more about this energy here. Ah, third person. Yeah. Yeah. So outside party, uh, this, especially with the swans here, which has to do with soulmates and relationships, uh, some people may be finding out that there is, uh, 
This is the energy of a love triangle. So you may be finding out that there's a situation where there's another person involved, where somebody's, somebody's um, taken up with another individual, or just where love situations are triangulated. And this is creating a, this is creating an intensity. This is creating a, uh, it's really, but it is a catalyst. Whether you're involved in a situation, like we said, there was energy earlier that said people may have options, right? And so this may not even necessarily be like a cheating situation, but a, a situation where there, there's a, uh, there's a person, more than one person that you're trying to choose between. Whoever comes into this situation, they are the catalyst that really uh, gets this energy moving and pushes things toward a uh, decision being made, right? Pushes things out of like a stalemate energy, if there was a stalemate energy going on. And ultimately, this leads, I feel like this leads to a deeper connection. It leads to something positive. Yeah. So we have the letter coming out. This is about uh, communication. Then we have the beaver. Persistence. New things on the horizon. Then we have the book. This is hidden. This is mysteries, secrets. Okay. And the yarn, which is complicated circumstances. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of that complicated, yeah. There may be some people involved in some complicated situations right now. And there may be, um, like we said, messages coming through. Things that you didn't see or didn't know being revealed. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so some people may be finding out about a third party, and that energy is catalyzing uh, some sort of shift, some sort of action. Mm, interesting. It's juicy. And then we got Taurus energy coming out. This uh, is, of course, ruled by Venus. This is also the Hierophant energy, so higher learning. Yeah. 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 So take that as it resonates, that Taurus energy. That's a fixed earth, right? So another fixed energy coming in here. But this is uh, the, the, the Hierophant energy I'm really feeling. That energy of a spiritual lesson. A major spiritual lesson that's unfolding through all of this uh, chaotic, confusing energy. And then we have the bouquet. Yeah. Harmony, happiness, reconciliation. So ultimately something beautiful and positive that comes out, that comes out of all of this. Openness, expressive, warmth. Right, that sounds like, that's a lot of Leo energy right there with the bouquet. Yeah, and then we have the bear. Strong, affluent, protective. That's that, that, that boss energy coming through though. Somebody, it's like their inner bear comes out. Yeah. And then the crossroads or the road. Yeah. So major, major decisions that are going to have to be made. Um, people who've been holding back from making decisions. Uh, this energy is not going to allow for that. Uh, you, we're really going to have to be that bear, right? Be that boss, boss energy, right? Make those definitive choices. Make those decisions. Like we said, coming out of that stalemate energy. Yeah, assessment, evaluation, 
seen clearly. Mm. And then the man on the bottom of the deck. Boyfriend, spouse, love interest, masculine energy. All right. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of um, intense, uh, intense uh, relationship situations during Leo season as well. Lots of different energies here. Um, we tapped into a whole bunch of different things, so hopefully there was something for everybody here. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Like, we could keep going with this uh, literally forever. Uh, but we're not we're not going to do that. If you guys were intrigued by some of this and you were resonating with it and you would like a personal reading, uh, my information is in the description box below. And so, um, yeah, uh, please reach out for that. It's definitely as I'm looking with the the uh, the man and the fox here on the bottom of the deck. It's like uh, what we're going to be seeing or noticing is that some people are not quite what they seem as well. Some situations are not quite what they seem. There's going to be a lot that um, is being reevaluated during this time. Uh, maybe even our our uh, our view of ourselves, right? So much, so much that is shifting, so much that is changing in our our perceptions and our realities. But yeah, like I said, reach out if you want a personal reading. I keep saying that I'm not going to get more into it, and then I want to get more into it, and it's just, it's a curse and a blessing, right? <laughs> um, I just have so much fun doing these readings for you guys. Uh, there are links down below to donate if you feel so moved to do so. If you liked this video, uh, hit that like button. Drop a comment. Let me know how these energies are feeling and resonating for you. And of course, a very happy birthday to all of my Leos. I know and adore so very many of them. They are so near and dear to my heart, every single one. So I love you so much. I appreciate you. Um, yeah, I feel like that's pretty much it. Uh, there's probably more things that I could say, but I don't think it's really all that important. So we're going we're gonna to end it right there. And I'm going to give you a big, beautiful Leo-esque Leo virtual hug. And I will talk to you all soon. Mwah.